Alright, this is Vegeta8259, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the 1144th scale RX-78. And, uh, this is the very first Gundam model kit ever made by Bandai. It was released in July of 1980. And, uh, <laughs> this thing is, it's so retro it hurts. But I like uh, I like stuff like this. I mean, I'm, I'm attracted to it in the same way that I'm attracted to uh, vintage Transformers. It's just, I mean, obviously it's not as technically marvelous as some of the newer stuff, but it uh, it has its own little quaint charm to it. So uh, I guess let's get into the review. Uh, before I start. Here's his box art, which you may or may not have already seen if you saw the unboxing video. But there it is. Again, very retro. And he is he comes molded in one color. Uh, it's that kind of off-white, greenish color. It's kind of weird. It's very hard color to describe, but... The whole thing was molded in that, so I had to paint the entire kit. Uh, for articulation, he goes 360 the shoulders. The shoulders can go out about that far, and then back in. The elbows can go straight, and then they can bend not quite 90 degrees, but they go about that far go ahead and take his gun out of his hand. The wrists can rotate 360. The head cannot go 360. It's very, just like the Zaku, his head is very, very tight. And I'm afraid to rotate it any further than that uh, for fear of breaking it. And about equal distance to the other side. Let's see, uh, he has no waist articulation at all, but uh, the legs go forward, and they go backward, and I'm surprised how far forward and back the legs go. Uh, the Zaku didn't quite move that much, so I didn't expect the Gundam to have that much range of motion in his legs. The knees can bend, kind of like the elbows, not quite 90 degrees. And, unlike the Zaku, the Gundam has uh, articulated ankles. They can just go up uh, about that far and then down. And I guess that does it for articulation. Uh, for his accessories, he does come with a shield. And I left a shield in his hand because it's really tight in there and I'm afraid of taking it out of his hand uh, without breaking it. So I just left it in there, but... You know, it can, he can hold it like so and rotate it around to the front, to the back. There's no peg on the shield to uh, put it on his backpack, so the only way to, to display it is to have him holding it. He does come with a beam rifle, which is pretty nice looking. Uh, like the Zaku, I think the beam rifle, or in the Zaku's case, the machine gun, is uh, one of the better looking parts of the kit. It's actually sculpted pretty well. It was all just one solid piece. There was no construction to it. And he does come with beam sabers. Uh, the funny thing about this kit, he actually came with four full-length beam sabers with blades. And what the instructions had you do was uh, cut the blades off of two of the beam sabers so that you could put them in the backpack like so. And it says to glue them, but they really don't need glue because you put them in there and they stay put fairly well. So I didn't bother gluing, gluing them just so I could have them come out. Let's see where to go. And here is the beam saber. I know, it's really, really short, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's basically it. The whole thing was white and had to paint the beam pink 
Actually, the end of the beam saber here was flat. It was just like cut off looking. And I had to sand it uh, down to a point like that to even make it look like a normal beam saber instead of just a pink stick he was waving around. And he should be able to hold it pretty well. Yeah. Now with the other beam saber, he came with, like I said, he came with four. Two for the backpack, two with beams. But for the other one, I cut the beam off and took uh, just an uh, extra tree from the beam sabers of some other kid. I can't remember which kid it was. And made a nice long uh, clear pink beam for him. I just cut it off. Uh, kind of carved the end down with an exacto knife and then uh, sanded it to make it a little smoother and then just glued it to the uh, beam saber handle and now he's got something a little bit more like the uh, high grade Gundam's beam saber and I think it looks a little bit better and just for comparison here he is next to the high grade Gundam. And I'll go ahead and take this out of his hand. And there you can see, what was it? See, this was released in 80. This was released in somewhere around 2000, I think. Maybe 99. So about 20 years between this kit and this kit. And you can definitely see what 20 years of modeling technology can do for a kit. <laughs> and here he is again next to the equally as old Zaku kit. And another interesting thing, uh, I didn't get this with the kit. I got it and uh, actually off ordered off eBay a big box of just random... Gundam model kit junk <laughs> and this happened to be in it it's a uh, old 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 probably just as old as this kit uh, box of Gundam color which is the uh, it's basically just the same paint that's in Gundam markers only it's in a bottle and this is the color set for the RX-78 <clears throat> as you can see it has him here on the back and the box is very tattered and falling apart, but <clears throat> as you can see, it comes with blue, a much darker blue than what I used. Actually, wait, no, this is the. Let's see if I can get these paints out. Yeah. This is actually a kind of a bluish gray color. Here's the blue that he came with. So, yeah, this is about the same color I used. <clears throat> and then. It also comes with white. So, yeah. I didn't bother using these because I don't really like lacquer-based paints. I prefer to use enamels. But, uh, just an interesting little, another piece of Gundam history. So, uh, I think that about does it. And I will see you guys next time.